You want to compost some wood chips and you want to speed it up. Should you use one of these, a leaf blower, to speed it up? Today we're going to find out how my experiment in trying to do that worked and if this was actually effective, faster, and worth it at all. Let's find out what's going on right now. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm Diego D.I. EGO and today we're talking decomposition of wood chips and how can we possibly speed that up by playing around with the rate of aeration or the volume of air that we're putting through the pile. These two barrels of wood chips have been breaking down since mid-June and the only difference between them is the way that they've been aerated. Passively aerated and this one has been forcibly aerated using a leaf blower. The idea behind this experiment was if we forced air into this barrel, would it make the fungi inside the pile be more efficient? And if they're more efficient, would they reduce the volume of wood chips faster? Would they break the wood chips down into something like a humus much faster than a control pile? So passively aerated, actively aerated. Again, the leaf blower was forcing air through this pile. The thought there was, could we eliminate any aerobic spots and can we kind of give steroids, if you will, to the fungi in here by giving them more oxygen? One question that's came up around the aerated pile was, what's success? How do you evaluate whether this one is better than that one? Without getting a lab involved, it's just gonna be visual. Can we see more mycelium in this pile? Does it look more broken down? Is there more of a size reduction between the two piles? So we're just gonna try and use our eye because I want this to be applicable to really anyone at home. I don't wanna to have to send in lab studies to say, is, a or B better. We just want to know quickly, was this worth the effort, the electricity, and the extra expense of getting the leaf blower system set up? And given the amount of effort required to do this, I want to see noticeably better results. So whatever that means, does this look more broken down than that? Is it noticeably different? If it isn't, we might as well just use the other method, the passive method, because no electricity, no extra equipment required, it's easy and it's simple. If we go back to the start of the experiment, both of these barrels were filled up to the top with wood chips. Well, this one has settled quite a bit. It's probably settled about 15 inches, whereas this one has probably only settled about 12 inches. Now, it could be the PVC framework is preventing it from settling more, but this one is definitely settled less visually compared to the other pile. So now that we know what we did and what we were going for, let's flip these two barrels and see if we notice any difference whatsoever. So the piles are now dumped out, but before I get into my analysis of the piles, we're gonna start this out with a little game. I wanna remove any bias from your thinking and your decision making. I'm gonna show you a series of photos. They won't be labeled. Each photo is gonna show the wood chips coming out of a different barrel. See if you can identify which barrel they came from. Was it the forcibly aerated or the passively aerated pile? Let's see how you do. So here are the two piles, the forcibly aerated and the passively aerated. Just first visual look at them from looking at the dumped out contents, they look about the same. All right, let's start pulling these piles apart, see if there's any noticeable difference looking inside them. Looking at these two piles, I would say that there's not much of a visual difference. I'm not seeing any really mycelium, no fungal hyphae in here, none of that. Same in this pile. This pile looks darker to me. It looks more of a black, where this looks more of a dark brown. I don't know how that shows up on video, but can you see a color difference between forcibly aerated and passively aerated? Definitely think it's darker. What does that mean? I don't know. There might, might be less big stuff in this pile versus this. This 
looks like it has a little bit more chunky wood in it this maybe looks a little more broken down one concern that one concern going into this experiment was could i maintain good moisture levels in both piles and one thing dr david johnson actually said was he'd worry about this pile drying out because i was blowing air through it looking at this pile it's very very wet so i don't think i had any problem with moisture if anything maybe i had too much moisture in this pile i don't think the volume of air going through the pile was enough to really affect moisture content so if you're ever going to do this i think you can add a small amount of water a few times a week and not really have to worry about it drying out i probably over added water to both these piles but you know they both smell like the forest soil nothing bad no putrid odors none of that but i just i don't know i really can't see a difference here can you so at the end of the day was forcing air through the wood chips worth it i don't think it was for as much as i wanted this to work and i really really wanted this to work i don't think it made enough of a difference to matter again without a lab i wanted to see a big visual difference between the two piles and i can't discern that difference with my eyes so i'm deeming it not worth the effort so why didn't this work i think part of the problem was wood chips they just take a long time to break down for fungi to do their work and break down all that lignin it's just going to take time and i don't think you can really speed that up without reducing particle size or going into some controlled lab setting where you can very precisely control airflow oxygen co2 levels all that type of stuff essentially a bioreactor with 100 percent control over it that's not going to happen in a home or garden setting so one thing i thought forcing the air would do would make the fungi more efficient and it would remove anaerobic air pockets i'm not sure that the forced air was even needed to do that i don't think these piles ever had a chance of really going anaerobic unless i overwatered them so i would be creating that problem myself if you think about wood chips they're inherently large particles when you put a bunch of large particles in a container you have a lot of pore space between all those particles that allows air to flow through which is why i think the passive pile did pretty well i think just having that air channel down the center and the fact that there's a lot of pore space between all the wood chips it was venting fine it didn't need more air at the end of the day so we were imposing a solution versus arriving at a solution that's the moral of the story in this one sometimes you want to do cool things or you want cool technology involved and you go in and impose your ideas upon things when the system really doesn't need it so forced air for decomposing wood chips trying to speed it up i don't think there's anything there if you think about where forced air makes sense i think it's going to be in materials that are greener less mature carbon grass clippings leaves manures the carbon to nitrogen ratio in those is a lot lower meaning there's a lot less carbon relative to nitrogen in them so they are more prone to going anaerobic they are able to be broken down faster because they don't have as much mature carbons they're easier to break down carbons so i think forcing air through a pile like that would be advantageous to avoid anaerobic conditions and to give a lot of air to all those aerobic organisms that are rapidly consuming all those simple sugars wink wink i may be doing a video on composting manure in these exact barrels coming up shortly i think aeration will make a big difference in the manure breakdown but hey we'll see so stay tuned for the manure breakdown video coming up probably in january but until then keep experimenting keep trying things and putting microbes into the soil and as always be a great person by being nice being thankful and do the work